Merry Christmas! It is such a joy to be able to celebrate this season and begin December celebrating with a focus on Christ together. I am so excited to bring a new friend to meet you who has a wonderful Christmas resource that I get to share with you, and I'm even going to do a giveaway of this also on Instagram this week. So stay through the end so I can share about how that giveaway is going to work. I really want to get this resource in all of your hands. Uh, I have a new friend, like I said, her name is Christy, and she is an author of a book called Come and Adore, an Advent Devotional. And I actually found the devotional first through another friend and then have connected with Christy and we're at the same church. So it's so neat how God brings people together in so many ways and turns out we have a lot in common too. So Christy has four children and has been married to her husband for almost 23 years. Her children range in ages from 19 down to eight years old. And she has had a heart for writing for so much of her life. She just recently said she was in her garage cleaning out things and found some stories she had written when she was six. So God has just placed that in her heart as part of her heartbeat and now is using it in ways to speak to mom's hearts specifically and be an encouragement to moms. And she has homeschooled for 11 years, which leads me also, she recently wrote a homeschool devotion book too called Precious and Pleasant Riches encouragement for the homeschool parent. And I will link all of these in my show notes as I always do, but what encouragement she's going to have to share with us today. If you want to follow her, her Instagram handle is k.menashi.writes. And again, I'll put it down in the show notes, so find her there. I know you're going to want to follow her and all that she's doing after our conversation today. Hi friends, welcome to the Seek Holy Living podcast with Christus Faboda. I am a wife to my wonderful husband, mom to my five precious children, and a friend to some amazing moms that I can't wait to introduce to you. Mothering is not a journey meant to be traveled alone. Join me every Monday for a new podcast where you will find hope, joy, and purpose. Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I am so excited to have stumbled across you through your book and know that God is going to use it in my life this year. It's funny buying because we're recording this in the fall time. It was funny when I ordered it uh, over a month ago. I thought this is a funny time to be buying a Christmas devotional, (laughs) but I'm so thankful that I found it and got it started when I did. Thank you. It's a wonderful resource. I'm excited to share it with people. So let's start with you sharing how this book even came to be. In November of 2019, the Lord started to put it on my heart to kind of use my social media, and I don't have many followers, but to put myself out there, I guess. And Mm -hmm. I tend to deal with some insecurities and fear, and I'm just more behind the scenes kind of girl. And so, and I, I struggle to commit socially to things like to tell anyone I'm starting a diet or, you know, Mm -hmm. and So with this, I just felt like he was calling me to, you know, use my social media as a platform to share about him. And, Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what that looked like. And I am a procrastinator, Mm -hmm. but I know that the Lord works outside of time. And yet it was November 30th when he made it clear to me what that would look like. And it was to be that each morning I would wake up and get my Bible out and just wait for him to put a word on my heart. And I just had to trust that each morning I would get up and I'd go make my coffee and then he would give me that word for the day. And so I would take a picture of something Christmassy around the house and um, just kind of wait for him to put on my heart what I wanted to share with people. And it was more just that... um, December would come and go and I wouldn't really enjoy it because Mm -hmm. I would get caught so um, much in the hustle and bustle of everything. Well, it's hard when you're a mom with a lot of kids. Yeah. You want to be able to, I feel like we, there's a lot of pressure to do things, to love each of them well, because we want Mm -hmm. to serve our children as individual Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. and to serve each of their hearts and going into Christmas, we want to make it special for each of them in their various ways. Yet as a 
believer. I also don't want to fall into the consumerism yes. of it's all about getting and getting. Yep. And at the same time, I want to be serving with them and doing right. things that have lasting value through the month of December, mm -hmm. pointing them to Christ. But then there's also this tension that I don't want to be so busy that we're not having time for stillness with family. Mm -hmm. And then there's traditions. I love traditions at Christmas time. Me I too. think it's just so fun. The things that they know to expect every year. Yes. But they take time and they take planning. Right. So I think there's sometimes so much that it can be easy to feel like we wake up in the morning and mm -hmm. just hit the ground running yeah. through the month of December and then look back and are just exhausted at the end. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to happen this December. Right. Right. Um, I want people to be able to be closer to the Lord mm -hmm. at the end. Exactly. Okay. So exactly. you woke up in the mornings, waited for a word from the Lord, mm -hmm. and then every day the Lord met you and you just wrote? He did. And he was so faithful to show up. And I, I'm just so thankful that each morning, you know, because December 1st, December 2nd, December 3rd, it was like, okay, you know, and then, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of just trusted like, okay, Lord, you're going to meet me each morning and you're going to give me that word. And it was such an encouragement to my heart, just that he would, you know, provide scriptures and things mm -hmm. to go along with the different words and, um, just shift my focus in that way. And it was almost like he multiplied my hours that oh. month, you know, it, as yeah. he's so good to do. It was like, give me your first fruits and come to me first and spend your time with me. And then there will be time for the mm -hmm. other things that are important. And yeah. it was also a good, um, just gauge of what was important mm -hmm. and what wasn't as much. So yeah. I always, pray regularly when I'm working mm -hmm. on this podcast, because it does take time. The planning of it takes time. Yeah. The outlines take time, all the things. And I feel like I only have so much to give because I do. Yep. And I regularly will pray, Lord, take my fish and loaves mm -hmm. because I feel kind of like that boy. Who, yep. They said, you know, will, will you give these fish and loaves? And as a mom busy with all of my children and taking care of them all well, mm -hmm. I only have fish and loaves sometimes, but mm -hmm. God is so faithful mm -hmm. that when we're doing his work, then he shows up and things get done yes. and it happens. And I look back, I'm like, how did I yes, do that? And exactly. when people say, how did you do it? I'm like, it's not me. Yep. That's the Lord. It's all him. Yep, for so, sure. so you mentioned in your book, or you mentioned just now that you started off with a word every day. And I love yes. that about the way the book is written. So every day has a different word mm -hmm. that's the focus, such mm -hmm. as believe. And then there's a little write a little write up of like a devotional, mm -hmm. but I really enjoy that you end it on specific scripture pa passages mm -hmm. because God's word is alive and active yes. and mm -hmm. my words are going to fall short. They're not going to be able to meet everyone where they are, mm -hmm. but God's word will. Mm -hmm. And I think this kind of a resource where it points you back to scripture keeps it alive and active for people in all different places of motherhood mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. because God's word is true no matter where you are in your journey of motherhood. So exactly. my hope would be that any mom would be able to get this and use it every day. It probably, it could be anywhere from a five minute read mm -hmm. to a 30 hour, mm -hmm. 30 minute hour long study. Mm -hmm. If you steep in the scripture mm -hmm. longer afterwards. So yes. that would be my hope. What's your hope for this book? Or what was your hope when you were first writing it? Yeah, my hope was just to encourage others to not get caught up, like you said, in the consumerism, just the commercial side of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just to shift our gaze to him, because I think it's so easy mm -hmm. and it sounds so silly, but we can truly forget that Christ mm -hmm. is the reason for Christmas and the reason that we celebrate. And so that was just my hope that it could encourage someone that one of the passages that I included that he put on my heart mm -hmm. would speak to someone in some way. And, and then through that, um, doing it on Instagram initially, mm -hmm. then I just had, you know, my mom and one of my kiddos, especially, and a couple of friends say, you need to put this into a book. And I just, I, that was never a goal or mm -hmm. my intention, but the Lord just lined all of that up and and here it is. So that's wonderful. He's awesome. That is great. Well, I have found when I start my mornings intentionally yes. thinking on the Lord mm -hmm. or directing my, yeah, directing my thoughts on him, it impacts my thinking for the mm -hmm. whole rest of the mm -hmm. day. So would you say that that was true for you too? Were you able to rest 
more and savor your days more after starting your mornings in this way? Yes, for sure. It made me intentional Mm -hmm. and it it brought about an intentionality with our family as well. And we chose different things that we wanted to do together during the month of December. And he was just so good. It, like you said, it just kind of, when we spend time with him, it sets our tone for the whole day. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, the opposite of that would be that when we don't spend time with him, it can be obvious to family and our children that we, you know, need to spend more time with the Lord. Yes. So. Yes. And I feel like it's evident yes. and it's yes. awful because it's such a reactive thing <laughs> that then it's like the words that come out and the actions that come out or the yes. fear that comes out. And I look back, I'm like, oh, it's because I wasn't, it's because I wasn't filling my cup first with the Lord at the start mm-hmm. of the day, mm-hmm. which I do know it's hard with so many children mm-hmm. and with young children that I still have a baby. My youngest will be one this Christmas. And so mm-hmm. between a one-year-old and a 12-year-old, like that span, I have someone up late every night. Mm-hmm. And that's when I have time one-on-one to hear about all of the heart and the feelings mm-hmm. and all of that. And then I have my baby who, you know, wakes me up pulling my hair sweetly yeah. or, you know, throwing his head into my face, yeah. <laughs> something precious every morning. So it can feel like it's too mm-hmm. much. It's too much to have another thing to do. But I find that if I make it a priority and make the space, even just for five minutes, it doesn't have to be a long thing because we take five minutes to look at our phone, right? Right. We take five minutes to answer a text of a friend Mm -hmm. that God is so faithful to meet me in that space. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about fast forward to when Mm -hmm. this actually started to become a book. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? It was just awesome. Um, I I was so encouraged by my son, my second son. He every time he would see me sitting at my computer, and this was summer of 2020, so it had been a crazy mm-hmm. year, and right. we didn't know what Christmas would look like, you know, mm-hmm. last year. But every time I'd be sitting at my computer, he'd walk by and say, "Are you working on your book, Mom?" And I would say, mm-hmm. "No." And finally, I got tired of telling him no. And I thought, I need to start working on this. And my mom, every time I would talk to her, have you started working on the book? So um, Mm -hmm. at the same time, my husband, who's a general contractor, happened to be doing a room addition house remodel for a gal that works at our church. And she does creative arts and media. And he kept saying, you should ask her if she would help you with it and if she'd do the cover and so I did, and she said yes, and uh, I took that as a yes from the Lord that, yeah. okay, I'm just going to walk through the doors that you open, and whatever it becomes, it's all for your glory, Lord, and use it however you see fit. And so we just kind of came up with a timeline, the two of us, of when we wanted it to you know, kind of be complete and ready to print. And so it was October 16th, I believe, last year um, that... It was available and, um, yeah, so it's just been crazy blessing. That's so exciting. Okay. And how does that feel like knowing, okay, I'm putting this out? Like, cause I mean, Instagram puts it out there, but then having something in a book form, I feel like Instagram is a mom space Mm -hmm. of my words for the day or the encouragement Mm -hmm. from the Lord. But there's something about having something in writing Mm -hmm. that with your name on it. Yes. Did it, how did that feel? It was very scary. (laughs) Um, it was, it was a mix of emotions. Of course, I was Mm -hmm. super excited and to hold that in my hands after just enjoying writing my whole life. And I'm a big reader too. And so just to have something, you know, like you said, with your name on it, it was just like, it was mind blowing, Mm -hmm. but it was also nerve wracking. And then, you know, you start thinking, did I write anything in there that I, you know, wouldn't want to share with everyone, Mm -hmm. but I just think there's such freedom in being more of an open book and just, Mm -hmm. I I just desire authenticity in relationships. And so that's kind of how I, you know, just tried to keep it. And so, and it was just, it was awesome. That's wonderful. Okay. You're talking about your son encouraging you in it too. Something kind of funny (laughs) I can relate to when I, when we were in the middle of all of the coronavirus, like springtime ish. So like things were really shut down here because we're both in Southern California. And my son at one point was watching TV and there was a commercial with like a mom so frustrated by the online schooling and having her kids Mm -hmm. and what they were needing. 
And I remember he came and pulled, he came and talked with me and he was 11 at the time, came to talk to me and said, mom, I really think you should consider starting a podcast for moms mm-hmm. to encourage them because I just think you do such a, he was like so nice. You know how your kids believe in you so much yes, more than you believe do. in yourself. I'm hesitant to say, cause it sounds like yes. haughty, but it, these are like a child's yes. sweet words Say, you know, mom, you just do such a good job. And I think you could really be an encouragement to other mm-hmm. moms. And I heard it and was like, oh, that's so cute. You know, and patted him on the back. Right. And then I think that that was just the beginning of God shaping my heart to lead me to this place. And like, I didn't picture this is where I was going to be. And similarly, I think about when we were working on cover art for the podcast, what we wanted it to Mm -hmm. look like, feeling like, I don't want this to be about me though. I want this to just be moms sharing their hearts of motherhood and what God's doing in them for other people. But as the Lord leads, you just keep stepping out. Yep. Right. And God just shows up. Okay. So... Did your writing with this and your time with the Lord create intentionality in different areas of your life too? Yes, it did. I am a night owl. And yes, so that was me the too. first thing. It almost was initially like a sacrifice in some ways mm-hmm. because I needed to get to bed earlier so that I could get up earlier. And for me, it was it was just so nice to have that quiet house. Everything was still dark. I would go sit under my Christmas tree and that was the only light and I had my Bible and my book. And um, so it was kind of just starting the day in an intentional way. And then the kids would get up and we homeschool. And so we, you know, would go about our day and then it just, we uh, wound up making a bucket list, so to speak, for December. And, you know, what are the things that we wanted to do? And I'm big on traditions as well. And so there were those types of things. And so it was just a neat time for our family to um, just come together and, you know, talk about what we wanted to do together and be in God's word together Mm -hmm. and things like that. So, so did you bring your kids in with you in your study time or like in your time focusing on the Lord in this new way? Or did you keep that a time that this is my time with the Lord? And then I will share with you from my overflow of my cup what did that look like? What's that like for you? It was more that they, that I was getting up so early that they were still asleep. Yes. But then some uh-huh. mornings they'd come in and, you know, and then we'd pray together mm-hmm. and, and, um, but it, for the most part, it was me by myself with my mm-hmm. quiet time. And then I would read with them later on and mm-hmm. we would go through, you know, the account of Jesus's birth and kind of, you know, take our time going through. I also had a children's advent that we okay. were reading through. So um, what's, do you remember what it was? I if you don't, to, that's okay. Yeah, you can yeah. send it to me. I'd love to share what okay. it is. And yes. we're um, going to do great. another conversation specifically about ways that we point our children towards yes. Christ through the yes. Christmas season, because I think it does need to be both. Mm-hmm. God is so good that when I, when there have been seasons, you know, you have sick children or mm-hmm. you have a baby who's awake all the time or whatever it is that I haven't been able to have my own personal quiet mm-hmm. time with the Lord. I find that when I sit with my children and we start our day with a morning time at the table together and I, we always begin in prayer and in God's word Mm -hmm. and God is so faithful to meet me there Yes, and his word is just as alive and active with my Mm -hmm. children as it is in my life. And so it speaks to me even when I'm speaking the truth to them, Mm -hmm. but I will say the times that I have that I can be in his word or Mm -hmm. having life spoken into me, whether it's from, you know, a book like this one that you wrote, or I love Sally Clarkson's book, Mom Heart Moments. And I'll read that. And that points you back to scripture too. Mm -hmm. I feel like my cup is full when they come to greet me or Mm -hmm. when they, when they come down while I'm already reading, I think what a better way for them to greet their mom Mm -hmm. than their mom in God's word. Mm -hmm. And I want that to be their memory. Yes, for sure. And then I'm giving to them from the overflow of what the Lord's poured into me exactly already when I can. I always think we can't pour from an empty cup. Yes. You know? And so we do need that filling of the Holy Spirit and that time with the Lord mm-hmm. so that we can pour that out upon our kids. And the Lord convicted me a few years back. I had had a really busy day and we were kind of running from place to place. And I, it was a day where I was viewing my kids as an interruption. Yes. And so he spoke to my heart, just your kids are not <laughs> the interruption. So from mm-hmm. that point forward, I tried to make it, I, I would never wanted to push them away or say, you know, give me 
more time, you know, mm. so if they did wake up or if they were around, then it was like, okay, come here. Let's, you know, you can read this with me. Mm-hmm. I'm reading, you know, whatever. So yeah. one time I was up late doing something as I frequently would be, cause I also tend to be more of a night owl. Mm. And one of my children got out their little storybook Bible and it was before she could write or read or anything. And she got it out and came and sat on the couch. I have this place right behind me with the pillow over here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Um, And I sit there. That's like my space of peace Mm -hmm. that I try to keep this area clean. Like everything else can be crazy, (laughs) but this space is going to be a place of peace. Mm -hmm. And she sat in the place where I sit and she got out a pencil and started underlining the words in her storybook. And she said, look, I'm being like you. And I thought, oh, this is, this is right. I want, I don't want it to be something that's separate from that. I want Mm -hmm. you to breathe Mm -hmm. in God's word the way that I get to and bring them with me. So yes, I think that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And you're right. There's that quote that says children are not, are not an interruption from the important work, yes. they are the most important yep. work. Yep. I love and, that quote. Yeah. I hold to that fully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, you talk about the idea of God being a personal God yes. who meets us where we are, like mm-hmm. in whatever moment that is. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like that kind of ties into this book and these thoughts in this season? I just love how, you know, we're going back for a second to our children, he teaches me so much through my kids. Mm, I know. <laughs> Being a Out of the mouth so of humbling, babes, right? <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. And so a lot of, a lot of ways that he speaks to my heart is through them and something that they'll say or do. And then it's either that like holy conviction yes. or just that rewarding moment where you're like, okay, they're getting it, you know, yes. both and are so important. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so I just think during different seasons, he's just been so good to, you know, a friend will text me a verse and it's one that I just looked up Mm -hmm. five minutes ago, little ways, you know, Mm -hmm. but ways that are just for me, Mm -hmm. you know, because he is a personal God. And so he makes it so clear that he's encouraging my heart. And I, I love that he is a God that allowed me to hopefully be used in this way to encourage others with a passion that I've had for my entire life Mm -hmm. for as long as I can remember. And, um, we, one of our children is adopted. Our daughter is adopted, um, from China and she's eight, right? She is eight. Yes. yes. And I have a nine-year-old daughter right now. It's such a special time. I love it. And our verse that kind of carried us through that whole process was Ephesians 3.20. And I have it Mm -hmm. now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And during that time that we adopted, I guess I just kind of looked at the verses that was for that season, but Mm -hmm. the Lord has continued to show me, no, 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 it wasn't just for that. And, um, even just, you know, when I got the boxes of books, my daughter was in there. Can I help you count the books, mom? And can we, we were Mm. making stacks and I just had this moment (laughs) where I just lost it because it was this picture of, you know, not only did he give us the gift of her through adoption, Mm. but then I was staring at these boxes of books and there's my daughter, (laughs) you know counting books with me. And Mm -hmm. it was like, wow, Lord, you are so good, you know, and, and so faithful. And he does way beyond what I ever would have thought. When I started on December 1st of 2019 with a little post, I didn't even know if I would be able to keep it up the rest of that month, you know, and then to go from that to providing the people to make it come to life Mm -hmm. and all of that. And then, you know, um, our pastor shared it as a book of the month at our oh. church. And it was just, you know, I just, every day I would wake up and it was just like crying tears of joy mm-hmm. and goodness and disbelief over all mm-hmm. that he was doing. And so, well, that's an interesting <laughs> thing too, about when you're creating resources that are going out, mm-hmm. you don't see the moms who are getting the books. Mm-hmm. You don't see them sitting and reading and the impact that it's making on their lives. Mm -hmm. It's such a place. I think writers have such an interesting place of obedience and doing the work and then handy, almost giving it back as a gift to the Lord's hands to say, Lord, use this how you will in mighty ways. 
And I can echo that some similarly that I felt sim- similarly doing this podcast because mm-hmm. I present these conversations with women and put them out there and they can go out into all the world. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. That is one thing different with the podcast that I can see all around the globe where people listen, that there are people in at like all these different continents and yeah. countries who listen every week. And, and it's a humbling and scary. I think, mm-hmm. Lord, if you're mm-hmm. going to use me again, I'll show up and yep. see what you have to do in this space. Um, and, and yeah, that it, it, it's, and hearing people's stories, you know, yes. of them, you know, I'm a better mom because such, such this, this, right. and this or whatever, right. how humbling it is. And just, glory to God to say that you would use me and yes. this thing. And like, you've always been a writer. I've always been a talker. <laughs> and I think I used to line up dolls and stuffed animals and talk yeah. to them. And now here we are. So it's amazing how God puts those gifts in us at such an early age and then yes. develops them and uses them for his glory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And going back to something you said about motherhood. So I, I've said many times that I think motherhood is one of the most sanctifying works. Yes of the Lord. And you have one child and you think, oh my goodness, I didn't realize these rough edges I had. Mm -hmm. And then you have another child who's completely different Mm -hmm. and realize, oh my goodness, I had more rough edges. And it was when I was pregnant with my third that I remember this different aha moment of saying, Lord, you are not just giving us another person. You are going to sanctify me. You are going to make me more like you in new ways. You are going to shape our whole family because they all relate to each other Mm -hmm. and they all shape who each other are. Mm -hmm. And it's like every child has just grown me in new ways that I think, Lord, what else is it going to be? I mean, when I was pregnant with my fifth, I thought, okay, there's something new, something more Mm -hmm. God wants to do in me. Mm -hmm. So I definitely echo that. Yes. It is a privilege and um, so stretching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, sure. and with that, I think our kids see, yes. they see the before and the after. Yes. For, you know, Lord willing, people hopefully see more of the after of the sanctifying mm-hmm. work. But mm-hmm. I think our children see us in the process so much mm-hmm. that sometimes that's hard that our kids see, you know, the best and the worst of us. Yes. I, the cry of my heart and my prayer is that I would be the same person inside Mm -hmm. my home that I am outside of my Mm -hmm. home. And so that takes constant, you know, apologizing to my children. And, you know, we get to these new stages of life and I just sent my oldest to college. And so Mm -hmm. it's kind of just that, you know, we're navigating different, you know, things and stages and I feel like I'm learning alongside my kids and yeah. especially with homeschooling them as well. It's, it's that constant, you know, just learning and growing and pruning and refining mm-hmm. process that's taking place. And so there have been many times I've had to just tell my kids, I'm sorry, you know, like <laughs> God is showing me yes. my areas of sin and the areas I need to change. And I'm not a perfect mom. I never will be, but I, you know, my most important, um, just the most important thing for me is that they would love Christ and spend Mm -hmm. eternity with him. So, Mm -hmm. and I think that's a great way to kind of wrap this up thinking about going through this Christmas season. Our goal Mm -hmm. is that we point our family back to Christ. Mm -hmm. And the best way we can do that is going to be, to be lighting turning his light on the brightest we can in us. Mm -hmm. May we be such a bright light and so filled. May our cup, I know there's that whole thing about not being able to serve from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. May our cup be so filled to overflowing Mm -hmm. that from the, there's that verse that says the over from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. May the, may our words, Mm -hmm. may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to the Lord. And may our children and our homes be blessed because we are so filled that Amen. out of out of that overflow, the Lord will be seen and be made known mm-hmm. even in greater ways through this Christmas mm-hmm. season. So, Christy, thank you so much. I'm so excited to share your book with people. Thank you. And I will definitely, like I said, be linking it in the show notes. And then I'll talk in just a minute about how we can do it as a giveaway. So, awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. What fun it was today to get to know Christy and see how many things we had in common, my goodness, between the Lord calling us through our children. What a beautiful thing, how God works through our children's 
hearts and their words to be able to speak to us. And my prayer is that the Lord just speaks through you to your children in this upcoming season. And again, be watching on my Instagram this week at Seek Holy Living, and I will do a giveaway of Christy's book, Come and Adore. I will also link it down in the show notes so you can buy it for yourself off of Amazon and get it shipped to you now so you can get started. Do it today or join us for this giveaway. I know that you will be encouraged. And if you're just aching for more Christmas podcastiness in your life, go back to last year's toward December. We did one about this time last December about preparing our hearts for Christmas. And I know it was with some other friends, so they're going to have some different words of encouragement to you. And that would probably bless you today as well. Have a wonderful start to your Christmas season. I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of our weekly conversations. And check out our show notes below, where I have links to the resources mentioned on the podcast. I release a new podcast every Monday and additional content at seekholyliving.com, including a video of this conversation and a deeper dive into all things mom. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Seek Holy Living for more fun and conversation. If this was an encouragement to you, please share it with your friends. And join us next week for a conversation about daring to be different.